Blog Talk Radio. You're listening to the Michael Mashey Podcast, broadcasting from the beautiful Palm Beaches in South Florida. Be part of the show, join in, and speak with the hosts and featured guests by calling 516-418-5590. And now, it's showtime with Michael Mashey. Give my regards to old Broadway and tell them... Uh, hey, welcome to the Michael Mashey Show. And uh, for our friends out there on Facebook, we are streaming live right now on Facebook Live. And we want to say good morning. I can't believe we are back with the podcast show, Michael Mashey Podcast, streaming live on Facebook. Man, we are just getting with some modern technology, uh, and it's very exciting, let me tell you. So uh, we have uh, a very special guest uh, that's with us today, and we're going we're gonna to get him right now on the line. But before we do, I just want to say that... Um, you know, he is a, a a theater historian. He's a fantastic entertainer, a singer, quick-witted. Uh, it's, I just there's there's too many things to describe him. But the but the most important thing to describe this person is most important to me is that he's my friend. This is uh, Richard Skipper is with us this morning. Good morning, Richard. Good morning. Now I'm crying. <laughs> what a very nice <laughs> thing to say. How are you? You know what? I, and it's, I mean it sincerely. We have really become really great friends. I and uh, you know my wife and I, we just adore you. And and, and well, everything I love you both do of me. you as well. Is she around? She, you know what? She is around. She may pop in well, on the show. Tell her to pop on screen and wave I told to her. me. I told her she's 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 busy working on stuff right now. I told her if you want to join us, you're more than welcome to. So, but uh, Richard. I had to get you on the show because, I mean, you're getting so big and popular and busy. <laughs> I don't think I'm ever going to I don't know how to take you. that. <laughs> no, that's a good thing. That's a good thing. So, first of all, how are you today? I'm doing great. Uh, this is a great way to kickstart my week. This is, first of all, this is one of the craziest weeks ahead of me that I think I've experienced in years and years and years. And, you know, with everything that's coming up, I'm feeling this pressure of, oh, my God, I've got so much to do. And it's so funny that my horoscope this morning said that I wanted to retreat into uh, the silence of being alone and everything. But I also want to share in the excitement of everything that's going on around me. Uh, so, you know, and that sums up perfectly where I am beginning this week this week. Yeah, you, you've got amazing things happening. Before we talk about it, I do want to remind people that we would love to have you join the show, talk to us. Um, you can call us at area code 516-418-5590. That's 516-418-5590. We'd love to chat with you. But, Richard, tell everybody what's going on. Well, first of all, you've got another installment of Richard Skipper Celebrates coming up this weekend. And um but but in addition to that you have so many other things happening. Let everybody know what's going on. <laughs> well if, if first of can. all, we if our hour. dear friend Peggy Eason is out there and she's listening. Oh, um, I, love I have to give a huge shout out to her because for my birthday this year, uh she gave me um a subscription to T C M Backlot, which is the Turner Classic Movies Backlot for the fans. Nice. And the first day that I signed on, it said there was a contest to fly out to California and present the opening film as part of the Turner Classic Movie Film Festival. So as you know, you were there uh, at our last uh, Richard Skipper Celebrate, which was on March 12th. We celebrated Lies of Anelli. And right. since Michael Stever, who is my videographer uh, for the show, you put all my montages together and my promos, which cannot be touched by anyone. I'm just so afraid right. that everyone's going to want you and you're going to have no time for me. That scares me. That um, will never happen. <laughs> okay, well, th from your mouth to God's ears. So <laughs> since Michael Stever was going to be there anyway, and we were going to be in the Laurie Beachman, which, as you know, has incredible lighting and sound, Nice. I thought, you know, why not do a little screen test on stage and send this to Turner Classic Movies? And their request was that I introduce the film Jezebel, which happens to be one of my favorite films. So we did the video, and then you did your magic by doing a little editing. It's on YouTube. If anyone just goes and looks up Richard Skipper Celebrates Jezebel, it's right there. I think uh, we're actually going to play it, Richard. 
Oh, wonderful. I but with your editing, yeah. it's not exactly perfect because I worked with Al-Q cards, and we did this within a very short time frame, as you remember. Um, right. But with your editing and Michael Stavers, uh you know, filming it, um, we I sent the video in, and on Monday morning of last week, I get an email from Turner Classic Movies saying congratulations that you've won. And because they feel that I was so comfortable in front of the camera, uh, rather than just having me come out and introduce the film, now I'm going to be interviewed by Tiffany Vasquez, who is one of the younger and newer hosts on Turner Classic Movies. So we're going to sit and we're going to chat uh on stage about the film and about my love of movies prior to the movie starting. It's a great kickoff to uh, the entire uh, festival. And then um, I get another email saying, well, would you mind coming a little earlier because we'd love to um, get some footage of you on the red carpet. So I said, sure. And by the way, I'm comfortable on both sides of the microphone. So they said, well, that's good to know that perhaps they will do some events here in New York. Now, I do want to say, um, in my opinion, for what it's worth, no one, no one, no one could ever replace Robert Osborne. Right. That being said, I want to step into his shoes. This is a dream job for me, and I'm going to do whatever I can to get to Turner Classic Movies. You heard it here first. I got to tell you, you are truly a natural. Blanc and I both said, I mean, you are perfect for that, you know, really. Well, I hope so. The interesting thing about uh, Robert Osborne, and Robert R. Osborne um, it was uh, one of Lucille Ball's protégés. And uh, he went to Hollywood, like most people would go to Hollywood or New York, to be an actor. And uh, Lucille Ball said to him one day, you're a good actor, but you're a greater writer. And that's where your energy mm -hmm. should be focused. So he began, because he knew practically everyone in Hollywood, thanks to Lucille Ball, he started covering the Hollywood scene, uh, you know, movies and everything. He wrote the definitive books, in my opinion, about the Academy Awards. And when TCM came about, it was a matter of being at the right place at the right time. And Russ Woolley, a uh, shout out to Russ in case he's listening, who is my dear, dear, I mean, he's become, like you, such an incredible force in my life. And I want to talk about that for just a moment, too. But yeah. Russ um, he said to me, if this had happened five years ago, um, it would not have been the right timing. There were certain events that were going on in my life and things, and I had to get through what I consider this a dark chapter in my life, which we're not going to talk about. But I got over that, and I got through that, and it's almost as if everything that I have learned and worked towards my entire life is coming together at this point in my life in this incredible convergence. And not only with the work that I'm doing and the comfort level that I have on stage in front of an audience, but the team of people that are surrounding me on this. Um, because, you know, for me, I love the collaborative process. And, you know, I look and uh, at, you know, and regardless, I'm just going to say this, regardless of what side you're on politically, and I'm not going to go there, but sure. regardless of what side you're on, you know, in order for this man to succeed, he has to be a team player. And the people that are around him have to work with him, and he has to work with them. And that's the only way that he will succeed. He can't do it by himself. And I feel the same way in terms of everything that I do throughout my life. It's not me just walking out on stage and saying, everybody look at me, look at what I can do. It's about the artists that I bring to be in the shows. It's the work that you do getting me to that point. It's the work that Russ Woolley does in terms of, um, you know, the support that he gives me on so many levels. And, you know, my uh, my husband, Danny, who you met briefly, you know, all mm -hmm. these uh, people that are in my life, you know, are part of this success. It's not me out there saying, hey, everybody look at me and look at what I can do, because it would be no fun for me to do that. I could very easily, and you know this, I could very easily each month put the same time and energy and effort into getting out there and doing my own thing by myself yeah. on stage in front of an audience. But to me, it's about sharing that stage with the people that I love in this business. And it shows. 
It definitely shows. And that's, Thank you. that's what's great about you because every time you do these uh, installments, you showcase – some fantastic entertainers. You're not afraid to share the stage, and you enjoy it because you know you know what each each of us learns from each other, and we and it's it's a wonderful thing to be able to enjoy all the different entertainers, and there's so many great ones, you know. Well, I'll tell you an interesting story. Uh, Carol Channing told a story once that when she arrived in Las Vegas to do her first Vegas show. Now think about this. This is the late 1940s, early 50s. Vegas was a very different animal from what it is now. And yeah. they did shows 24 hours a day. There were shows that were booked at 4 o'clock in the morning. And the interesting thing is that all the other artists that were performing all over town would go to to support each other. And she was asked to do a show at 4 o'clock in the morning. And no one wanted that spot, not because of the hour, but because it was following Jimmy Durante. And uh-huh. she said, and everybody said nobody can follow Jimmy Durante. It was the hottest thing in show business at that time. And Carol says, I'll take the job because all she felt that she needed to do was to step into the love. And that's the way I feel. If if an artist comes on stage and the audience loves that uh, artist, um, and I call artists and entertainers instead of performers, there's a difference in my opinion. Uh, but if the audience it enjoys them as much as I do, then I've done my job. And they've done their job. And it's about showcasing them. And I do want to say that a lot of the people, not because of me, but because I'm showing them in a different sort of a light, have actually gotten bookings as a result sure. of being in my show. I'm not surprised. Because, you know, you go to see a show. If you go to see the Michael Mashey show, Right. The audience has a great time. They enjoy being in your company and everything. But when you've got someone sitting there asking you the questions, as you are with me today, the right. audience is seeing a different side of that person that they normally would in just a simple, you know, going to see that person show. So, right. you know, and I want them to feel comfortable. That's why I sit and chat with them. You know, it, all these elements just come together, and it's so much fun for me. It's great. And, you know, before before we go on any further, I really do want to play for everybody um, th- that video clip that I was talking about where you introduce uh, – where, where you're going to – you said you're going to be flying out to Hollywood, correct? Is that when? I'm flying out. I leave first thing – well, first of all, tomorrow night I'm uh, performing at the Metropolitan Room in a okay. celebration of Scott Barbarino, who is my publicist. And they're doing a This Is Your Night, Scott Barbarino. I'm doing that tomorrow night. Then I okay. leave first thing Wednesday morning. Uh, I mean, uh, yes, Wednesday morning. I do this thing Thursday afternoon. I fly back on Friday. I'm oh, trying okay. to get back in time to see Lorna Loft at uh, Fine Fine Fine? And then yeah. uh, I've got my show on Saturday uh, afternoon. And and I'm not even able to come home and rest then because <laughs> I'm going to see Leslie Ann Warren at uh, the St. George Playhouse on uh, Saturday night. So that's my week in a nutshell. Sunday, I'm probably just going to collapse. <laughs> how did I get you on the show? That's what I'm talking about. How did I get you? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm going to play this clip for everybody. Now, unfortunately, for those of you listening to the audio broadcast, you're going to hear it. But on, for those of our friends watching on Facebook, you'll be able to see the, the, the clip as well. Let's let's play this and, and take a look. This is Richard Skipper introducing the fantastic movie Jezebel. Hello, I'm Richard Skipper, and I'm very excited to be here to talk about one of my favorite films, and that's the black-and-white classic Jezebel, filmed in 1938 at Warner Brothers Studios, starring Betty Davis, Henry Fonda, Faye Bainter, and an amazing cast of performers. In 1936, the novel Gone with the Wind came out, and there was a massive search as to who would play Scarlett O'Hara in the upcoming Gone with the Wind. There were many actresses that were being considered for this role, but one actress in particular, who was the star of Warner Brothers, was dying for the opportunity to play this role, and that was the one and only Betty Davis. Those Betty Davis eyes, unfortunately, did not see themselves through the lens of David Sells' next Gone with the Wind a few years later. But William Wyler came aboard and filmed this incredible movie, giving Betty Davis a chance to win an Academy Award. It was a very interesting film at the time that it was being made because there were similarities to this film and the upcoming Gone with the Wind. Betty Davis was already the star of Warner Brothers Studios. 
Henry Fonda was very interesting at the time. His very expectant wife was expecting the soon-to-be Jane Fonda, so he was leaving the set every day so that he could get home to be with his wife. And as he was running off to be with his wife, they would shoot Betty Davis's film uh, scenes in the morning, and then he would come back and do his scenes the next day, and they would splice them together. I'd like you to sit back and enjoy this incredible film from 1938, William Wyler's Jezebel, Academy Award winner, Betty Davis. I mean, how great is that? I mean, <laughs> well, I, I sit there and I watch all the flaws in it because, as you I are, said, we did it without yeah. cue cards. But I'm telling you, I mean, you are liter- you really are a natural. I mean, I could see that for every movie. Now, now, Turner Classic Movies, I must say I've, I've watched that network a few times, but um, – do they have Do they have a specific host for? Oh yeah, um, right now it's Ben Mankiewicz, um, okay. you know, who is the nephew of Joseph Mankiewicz, and he's okay. uh, Robert Osborne, of course, was the host for many, many years. I mean, right. Turner Classic Movies is, in my opinion, uh, where uh, is where it is because of Robert Osborne uh, right. and the contributions that he gave to the show. Uh, ben Mankiewicz um, is there now, um, and. But in addition to the – where I really want to go is to do these on-air uh, interviews with, uh, with the, you know, the people from that era. And not just the people from that era, but, you know, the average person, you know, and how those yeah. films have touched their lives. Right. No, I, the, interview, the interview portion – and i got to tell you something I could learn from you because you, you're a great interviewer. I, I'm a musician and a singer. I'm really not an interviewer, but I just I just enjoy talking to people in this field. It's just a wonderful thing, and you're that's the secret. That's it. You're such a you're such a talent, really. You, you know how to do it right. I'll tell you. Well, when um, I do an interview, um, I obviously have to do my research. I have to know who I'm interviewing, what I'm going to be talking about, um, and um, I leave people who have seen my interviews. I don't sit there with notes. I don't have notes in my uh, lap. I I know the subject enough. I know why they are there. Um, normally when someone agrees to do an interview, um, if it's someone who's older in the business who we perhaps haven't seen or heard from in a while, we mm-hmm. want to talk about the highlights of their life and career. I'm not interested in salacious gossip. Uh, they can go elsewhere right. for that. I'm interested in sharing their story. What makes that person tick? How did that person get from point A to point B um, and beyond? And so it's just a matter of listening to that person, and uh, my questions and my comments flow out of what they're saying and doing. One of the worst things that I see happening with a lot of interviewers is you and I are sitting and talking. Like I will say, um, Mike, how did you get started? How did you end up performing at the Colony? Do you want me to answer? Yes, I want you to answer. I have had a long-standing relationship with a good friend of mine, Rob Russell, for over 20 years. And um, once I started working with him, there was a, an incredible bond friendship that um, every time I talk to him and if there's ever an, an opportunity for me to work there, and if, you know, I mean, he always welcomes me to work there. And if I'm, if I'm available, I enjoy it. So, I mean, it goes back 20 years. Did you see the AMC Awards last night? I did not. But do you see what I did? I mean, what, my next question had nothing to do with what you just said. Ah, I see. Okay. And that's the mistake that, in my opinion, that a lot of interviewers make. And also, the audience is there. You need to feel the energy of the room and who you're playing to. And they, there are certain things that they want to know about. Um, what I always try to do with all of my interviews is I like to leave at least a 10- to 15-minute spot at the end so that the audience can ask the questions that perhaps I didn't ask. Right. Uh, but you, you have to also be respectful of the people that you're interviewing. And there are certain boundaries that you don't cross. Um, you know, I don't want to, uh, you know, bore the person that I'm interviewing uh, by asking them the same questions that every other interviewer has asked them. So I go in different directions with my interviews. Right. And, you know, I've noticed there's a lot, I, I, you know, I won't mention any names, but there are some people out there that definitely go for that shock value. Mm-hmm. Come out with those just crazy questions, and for some reason that does have an audience and it is popular. But to me, the wholesome getting to learn about someone is more important than trying to put someone on the spot or embarrass or, 
You know, you don't want to talk about the negative stuff. That's what I There's feel. There's a great clip on YouTube. I, it may be on YouTube. I don't know. But it, I saw it um, when uh, at the premiere of Beauty and the Beast, Celine Dion was on the red carpet. And a guy came up to her and says, can I ask you one question? She said, sure. And he said, do you feel that Adele deserved uh, oh. to win the Grammy Award over Beyonce's uh, Lemonade? And she said, let me stop you right then and there. We're not here for that purpose tonight. We are uh-huh. here to celebrate this film and to talk about this film. You know, that's not the, this is not the time and the place. And so for a reporter to have this phenomenal opportunity that most people would kill to have an opportunity to stop Celine Dion on the red carpet and ask her a question. And if everything that he could have asked her, this was the question that he asked, she yeah. lo- he lost her. And she lost him. Yeah, and there's there's some people out there in the audience that like to see people get flustered and, and taken off guard. I, I, I'm not one of them. I, I don't like that. I, I But like you said, that's just not the way to go. That's not not how you go, and that's not how I would how I would do it too. I, no, I like, uh, absolutely not. I'm there to yeah. celebrate. I'm not there to denigrate or to put down. Well, I will tell you something. You know, you and I are just having a casual conversation, but you, are you, I don't know if you're watching on Facebook Live. Are you by any chance watching? The stream? Uh, well, you know, my my computer. I walked away from my computer so that I could just focus on you. Perp- I, but what's happening? Do we have an audience? Well, we do. But I just want to tell you what's really funny. You should see what's in front of me here. I mean, I am. <laughs> I have our studio going for the radio broadcast, but then I have uh, some. I'm showing people on Facebook Live right now. I've got this one that's playing particular clips. I've got this item here that's another iPhone that's playing particular clips. I'm running a little camera here that has actually nine camera angles that kind of zooms in on you. I don't either. And and not to mention, <laughs> I'm playing piano. You know, if you want to hear some piano music, you know, yeah, I have it all ready to go. But um, no, it's, it's but you know what? This is such a blast, and especially having you as the first guest. It's, it's well, wonderful. thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> I want to talk about, you know, Richard Skipper has really uh, brought me into the mix as far as what he does these um, Richard Skipper celebrates uh, shows. And basically, he's either celebrating everything that happened on a particular day or celebrating someone's birthday or an accomplishment. Um, And like you said, the last time it was uh, Liza Minnelli's birthday. And I was so glad that I was able to come up and be a part of that. Uh, oh, but my God, this, I'm thrilled that you did so that. so much fun. <laughs> but now this next installment is a celebration of Yip Harburg. And I have to admit, Richard, I had heard the name, but I didn't know. I didn't realize the history of Well, Yip it's Harburg. interesting that you say that because Ernie Harburg, who is Yip's 90-year-old son – who will be at the show, by the way, on uh, oh, wow. Saturday. Uh, we had a long conversation the other day, and he feels that his father doesn't have uh, the credit or has not been given the credit that he deserves. Uh, when you think, when people start thinking of the great songwriters, I'm sure that Irving Berlin and Cole Porter and uh, the Gershwins will all pop up, but. The name Yip Harburg may not come into the mix, and it's not a name that's fresh on people's minds and everything, but when you say the Wizard of Oz, I mean, there's not a person on this planet from five years old up who doesn't know what the Wizard of Oz is. That's and right. so uh, the most iconic um, movie song, in my opinion, ever written is Over the Rainbow. And uh, so it's... Uh, it's amazing that people know his music, but they don't know who he is. He was blacklisted. He was, you know, uh, was a, in his own words, a democratic socialist. Um, and he tried to bridge that world. I mean, this man uh, wrote, uh, Brother, Can You Spare a Dime? And then on the other end of the spectrum, How Are Things in Glockamara, Look to the Rainbow, Over the Rainbow, uh, so many great songs that this man wrote. Yeah, it's quite amazing. Um, yeah, it's, it's an amazing history about him, and I'm glad you introduced me to him because, I, like you said, everybody knows Harold Arlen, of course. You know, they know the, the music of him, but um, but I never I never knew. And I'm doing all the research, and um, it's just quite an interesting an amazing career, isn't it? And unfortunately, I mean, he died because he was hit by a car. 
Uh, you know, I didn't even get to that part. Is that, yeah. I didn't well, I, I don't want to be a spoiler for you no. on that, but, uh, no, but you know, well, how, what, that's how why was his he? life was cut short when it did. How old was he when he passed? He was in his 80s, but he was hit by a car. What a shame. Oh, my gosh. Yes. Um, what I'd like to do for everybody right now is to play a, uh, a beautiful clip of Yip himself with the verse to Over the Rainbow and the song itself. Can we do that, Richard? Can I play that for Absolutely, you? Absolutely, and I would love if anyone's out there to call in. I'd love to hear who's out there. Absolutely. If you'd like to call in and speak with Richard, you can call us at area code 516-418-5590. We'd love to hear from you. But in the meantime, here is Yip Harburg himself singing the, 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 the greatest words of, of a song of all time. And this is actually, Over the Rainbow was voted the number one song of the century for the last century. But this is And Yip believe Harbor. it or not, it was yeah. just inducted just two weeks ago into the Recording Hall of Fame. Oh, that's wonderful. It's about time. Yes. <laughs> Here's Yip. When all the world is a hopeless jumble and the raindrops tumble all around Heaven opens a magic thing. When purple clouds darken up the skyway, there's a lovely highway to be found leading from your window pane to a spot behind the sun, just a step beyond the rain. Somewhere over the rainbow, way up high, there's a land that I heard of once in a lullaby. Somewhere over the rainbow, skies are blue, the dreams that you dare to dream. Really do come true. Someday I'll wish upon a star and wake up where the clouds are far behind me. Where troubles melt like lemon drops away above the chimney tops. That's where you'll find me. Somewhere. amazing isn't it i know just amazing. It's, it's emotional you know you hear i can hear the emotion in his voice it's just such a beautiful song um <clears throat> richard i do not want to keep you much longer um i don't have any callers ready to call in this time but i want to tell you something um we do have we do have quite a few people watching on facebook and this is not the last time that you and i are going to chat on the air we are definitely going to talk again well i hope so yeah, I want to follow up with you and find out how everything goes out there in Hollywood. Well, I'm hoping to do a couple of Facebook Lives while I'm out there just to uh, let everyone know what's going on and, uh, you know, to share in the experience. I don't know if I'll be able to do so uh, when I am on stage. You know, we've got uh, – I've got a couple of friends that are going to be joining me for this. So uh, let's hope so. That'll be wonderful. And, Richard, you know, I, like I said, I, I'm going to end the show at this point. Um, and we are going to definitely talk again. And, and uh, I do know. want to say before we go, if you don't yeah. mind, uh, that I on we I am going to be at the Laurie Beachman Theater on 42nd Street on Saturday afternoon at one o'clock. It's a great brunch show, and please note it is Saturday, uh, one o'clock. And I have uh, well, I'm going to say I've got three incredible guests: Karen Oberlin, Leslie Orfino, and Maureen Kelly Stewart. 
Uh, in addition to that, we also have the Harlem Repertory Theater is going to do our finale. They have a jazz version of The Wizard of Oz. Uh, oh, yeah. They're going to be doing a few selections from that. And uh, Anita Gillette is also making an appearance. And my fingers are crossed uh, because we have a possibility of a major name that uh, has a direct connection uh, to Yip Harburg on a level that will blow people's minds if I was to say who it was. Oh, um, I and we're just it. waiting to hear whether or not he or she's going to be there. And uh, you can make reservations by going to richardskipper.com and clicking on the yellow star. And, and of course, if nothing else, they have to be there to see your opening montage. Oh, I, I'm, I'm having a blast putting that together. We're almost complete on that. and uh, I can't wait to see it. Yeah, it's going to be great. <clears throat> By the way, did you go see Leslie the other day? I did. Leslie Orfino was going? absolutely phenomenal. Let's give her a plug. She's going to be, uh, once again, at Don't Tell Mama, 343 West 46th Street, on uh, April 20th, 7 p.m., Cocktails with Cole. And if you have to ask Cole who... <laughs> then it's time to check in at the door. <laughs> first name Cole, not last. First That's name. That's right. That's right. <laughs> Richard, thank you so much. You are thank the best. Thank you, and have a wonderful, wonderful day. And give a block a big hug and a kiss for me. I absolutely will. We'll talk. Maybe Thanks next for all week, you okay? do. Oh, you uh, absolutely. It. Thank awesome. you. All right. Thank you, Richard. Goodbye. That was Richard Skipper, my friends, and uh, he's just. Um, He's just a wonderful guy. And, uh, yeah, you got to go see that show. If you're in that New York area, you got to go to the Laurie Beachman Theater on Saturday. And I, you know, I've, I've only gone to one of his shows. Um, and that, of course, was the Liza Minnelli show. And, boy, from what I got from just that one show, it, it's just so much fun. It's, a, it's such an uh, intimate setting. He makes you feel like you're in his living room. It's just – and he's funny and quick, and there's nothing scripted about him. He's just – He's just brilliant on stage. He really is. But uh, but that was Richard Skipper, folks. And we are definitely going to follow up with him because he's got some fantastic things happening, like we said. Uh, Turner Classic Movies. Man, doesn't get much credit than that. Hey, but you know what? We are so glad to be back doing our podcasts. And we're going to try to line up some wonderful guests for you, including Richard. And uh, we have uh, quite a few singers and uh, songwriters that we're going to be talking to as well. You know, this past week, uh, or the last few weeks, working at the Colony, I have been able to work for and meet and play for some wonderful people. Michael Feinstein, John Pizzarelli uh, performed with me a couple weeks ago, and the great Steve Tyrell. Um, yeah, we're going to get all these guys on the uh, on the show, and we're it'll be very interesting to talk with all of them and see what they're up to, too. And uh, But for now... That is the end of this show today. We thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for joining us here on Facebook Live. And, you know, also, you can also watch the video again. So if you go to my Facebook page, if you go to Michael Anthony Mashey, just look for Michael Anthony Mashey, and you'll see when we're going to be doing our live streams um, in the future. And I'm thinking uh, I want to make sure that you know everything else. Yeah, if you, you can also go to michaelmashey.com, and you'll see how to listen to the live broadcast on, on the air. You can call into our show, um, but we're going to have a lot of fun. We're getting all of our technology in order, but uh, once we have it all, and I think we're there. We're pretty much there. But uh, that's it for today. We thank you so much for joining us, and we're going to catch you next time. Be sure to follow me on Facebook, Michael Anthony Mashey. We're also on Twitter, too, Michael Mashey. Very simple. And you can always check out michaelmashey.com. Thanks so much, folks. You've been listening to The Michael Mashey Show. If you would like to contact us or be a guest on our show, email us at michaelmasheypodcast at gmail.com. Visit michaelmashey.com and sign up for our email list to receive show updates and schedules. Follow Michael on Twitter at Michael Mashey and on Facebook at Michael Anthony Mashey. Be sure to check out the live stream videos of our shows on Facebook Live and Periscope. Join us for our next broadcast. Ciao for now.